Guess what's going to happen now? Another great interview on the Young Turks. Ian Gomez joins us. He's an actor. He's best known, of course, for uh, his movies and his TV shows. You know, Javier on Felicity, Andy on Cougar Town right now. Uh, Murphy Brown, Drew Carey show, Lost Heroes, Curb Your Enthusiasm, about 28 others. Wow! If yeah. I started reading your movies, we, this interview would take 48 minutes. Yeah, I've been in uh, a lot of stuff, mostly TV. Um, I'm usually not this shiny, but I didn't bring my makeup, so yeah, you know, okay. that's one of those things. Everything's gonna be okay. That's fine. I'm not really concerned about it. I'm just this is gonna go. Good. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, no. Boom. There. Does it that goes. make it better? I think. Oh, yeah. yeah totally, takes it down totally, a bit. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so, Ian. Yes. Uh, you grew up in New York. I'm from New York City, uh -huh. um, moved to uh, Chicago when I was tired of New York City. Not tired, but um, afraid to start acting in New York City. Uh -huh. And then uh, met my wife, uh, Nia Vardalis, there. And then we moved out here to Los Angeles. Uh, Nia of My Big Fat Greek Wedding yes, uh, right. fame, yes. which you were in. Yes. She's put me in all of her movies. She's very nice. All right. Hey, well, it's, she's your wife. I yeah. Think, well, yeah. You know, that, that she helps. has to. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, I'm going to skip ahead to something, and then I want to come back to your life history, because okay. I'm interested sure. in yeah, that. Yeah. So, it, it says that before you guys got married, you got converted to Greek Orthodox Church, right? Yes. So, uh, Ian Gomez, my guess is you were not born into the Greek Orthodox Church. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I'm half Puerto Rican, half Russian, uh -huh. and uh, I was Jewish and Catholic, uh, but never baptized or bar mitzvahed. So, in order to get married in the Greek Orthodox Church, I had to be baptized, and I decided, well, might as well be a Greek Orthodox, uh -huh. and that pleased everyone very much. I, I imagine. So, um, so did you? Is that my big fat Greek wedding kind of based off of your yeah, wedding? Yeah, it's basically. You know, my wife had a bunch of stories about uh, her family and growing up and all this stuff and the conflicts, and she wanted to wrap it around something, and you know, she decided our marriage and us meeting and all that stuff would be a perfect, uh, you know, kind of like a camel for all that luggage to put onto. I don't know why I said camel. It has nothing to do with you. <laughs> I, I already like this. Okay. Okay, so, uh, so that's, that's interesting. And it, it, look, everybody loved that movie because it, we related to it. So yeah. it, it, her dad was my dad, who you just met, right? Yes, yes. You know, with it, he doesn't do the Windex <laughs> thing, but he does everything else. And, it, and the Turks are responsible for... Er, like every positive thing in the world. Yes, and exactly. Although we just found out like some amazing, oh, it turns out Abraham might have been buried in my parents' hometowns. And my dad's like, what did I tell you? Okay, <laughs> so, so we've all been there. Um, but I feel like you got robbed. I mean, you didn't have a bar mitzvah. You didn't get the presents. You, didn't you know, get there, was, there was a thing. There was an offer. It was offered to me. Do you want to go to Hebrew school and learn this language? Um, I mean, I'm struggling in English. I'm not going to learn another <laughs> language, and then go to this party and fake it, basically, right. for um, for a year of my life. And I decided, you know, uh, the savings bonds weren't going to be worth it. So I decided not to do you, it. You know what? I actually, now that you say it that way, I totally agree with you. I mean, I, I hated mean, school to begin with, so I was going to add more school into my life. Yeah. Just yeah. for you know, for some cash. Because it wasn't, my heart wasn't in it, so, you know, I'm good at faking stuff. I mean, I'm an actor. Right. You know, I enjoy, it looks like I enjoy doing what I, I do. So, um, I could have done it, but it was like. So, what do you, you do that around 13 or something? Yeah, I would have probably started 12. Yeah. And I was too busy smoking pot, so I couldn't Were really. You, I, I got, you know, I grew up in. You know Greenwich Village and stuff. And oh, you grew up in Greenwich Village. I mean, you're the world's biggest hippie then. I mean, well, you, I mean, my parents were kind of beat Nicky, so I wasn't really a hippie. Um, What's uh, I don't even know. Plus, I had this hair, and I can't. You can't this long is not very good. <laughs> For it's, it's not a very hippie. Not look, a very good look. Is there a difference between hippie and beatnik? Well, the hippies were um, they wore more bell bottoms, and the uh, the beatniks were a lot of black turtlenecks. And berets. Oh, I and see. Did the poetry slam thing? Oh, okay, okay. I didn't know, but they both smoked pot, right? Oh, everyone smoked pot. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. So, did they mind you smoking pot at twelve? Um, uh, but they weren't thrilled about it. They weren't like, "Yay! You finally, you, you found the wonder drug." Um, but my mom was like, "Well, as long as you do it at home and not on school nights and all that stuff." Um, but of course, I did it. Outside of home and on school nights, and, uh, right? Of course, um, but you know, was, I, and I survived. So I, I have a similar story. Like the, the, we were going, to, they had Turkish school, mm -hmm. and so they would make you go to Turkish school, and so I got kicked out on the first day. 
And but at, like, but at the end of Turkish school, you didn't get presents. I mean, you probably got an ass kicking. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. So, like, there was no upside at all. Right. And I already knew Turkish because I had come from Turkey. Right. So, like, this is the biggest waste of time in American history, right? But it's about the culture too. I mean, it's about keeping in touch with the culture and yeah. and having that circle of friends and everything like that. Yeah. But I was, I, I mean, I was an outsider as you know, as a Jewish person, not really Jewish. I didn't really want to go. That that they're my people, but not really my people. But um, so there wasn't a cultural kind of longing for me to be there on yeah. my part. Yeah, and I mean, have you seen Turkish people? Who wants to hang out with those guys, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, there was good friends of mine there, but. I've seen uh, them at the baths. Yeah, so do you get any, like when they baptize you for the Greek orders, do they dunk your head in the water? Or no, it was, it was kind of, you know, we did in Chicago, and was, the priest was really cool, and of course he had a screenplay he wanted me to read. Um, but, uh, <laughs> did he? Yeah, well, yeah, oh, they all did. That's awesome. And actually got made, actually. Um, but uh, it was, you know, I just had to take off my shirt and I, they put I'm it over out. my head. And it was, it's oil and water and they put on you. And then you get a new shirt and a cross and you go out to dinner. So I went out to dinner and I, I went to the bathroom and I was actually more shiny than I am now. It was like put oil on covered in oil. <laughs> and so I'm like, Ooh, I was like baby Jesus or something. They just, probably gave you a halo or something. Yeah, it did. I was, yeah. Yes, I felt very holy. And, but I was quite embarrassed at how shiny it was. That's funny. Uh, so uh, are you actually Greek Orthodox or like? Uh, Technically, I mean, I have the certificate and the cross <laughs> and everything. <laughs> did you but keep I'm, it? I'm also Jewish. I, you know, I'm also Catholic. I, I, I keep all of that stuff together. And I use none of it unless it benefits me somehow. Yeah. You know, if like if I'm with Greeks, I'm like, hey, 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 hey. if I'm with Jews, I'm like, hey, 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 and, you know, the whole Puerto Rican, yeah, hey, I don't speak a lick of Spanish though. So, um, your name I'm is Ian Gomez. You I'm don't speak fraud. Spanish. I'm a fraud. I'm a fraud. I learned what I, uh, I know what I learned in high school when I wasn't stoned and in working in restaurants. Uh -huh. So I can order food and, um, you know, and get okay. rolling paper. All right, you know what? We're going to test you out right now. Uh, Say I geez. like a crazy chicken. Yo quiero uh, uh, pollo loco. Oh, that's a. It's the name of a restaurant here. Ah, oh, that was a, that was a lob. Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay, I'm just trying to help a brother out. Thank you very much. I don't know Spanish it. either, but I know oh, pollo. Wow, loco. wow. You, you gave me the perfect sentence. <laughs> so uh, when so the, sometimes the Jews don't want you. Like so not in your case because you were born Jewish, but like like if you're not Jewish and you want to convert, a lot of times like you sure like. What's well, here's the thing. I mean, uh, I found that there. There's like a hierarchy in the, the Jewish thing, and you you know, you're never really Jewish enough. I yeah. think sometimes with some people, it's like, well, did you go to temple? No, you didn't. Well, where were we sitting? Okay, well, you're back there. Well, we were closer. So that whole, but I think that's in every religion. <laughs> it's like the self righteous kind of we're closer to God than you are. Of course, we're more holy than you. I and think the guy's closest it, that. Is I guarantee you're the furthest away. <laughs> it's always that way. It's always like, right. oh, that's the guy who burnt down the his factory to collect the insurance. Yeah, the guy right at the at the front of the temple. Well, you know, or actually, the church or with the uh, during uh, Greek Easter, you know, there's a whole big thing at the church we go to, and there's some other, you know, celebrities who go, and I go, we go uh, as a family, and you know, we show up, and there's a guy there, you know, with a toupee, and he's like, he's like, he's a maitre d at a restaurant. Two, no, no, me. <laughs> and he walks you up to the front of the church, and you're like, and everyone's like, why are they going up to the front? You know, who's that over there? You know, it should be about you know God, God, Christ has risen, but it's more like, why are they sitting up closer? Yeah, and that it becomes that kind of a thing, and it's oh, I feel so embarrassed because I feel like a fraud, but you know, that's no, between no, no. you and me. Okay, no, nobody will see it though. Don't no, worry. No, no. And uh, and but. It, it, you're wrong though. Jesus loves celebrities. Oh, that's why he would always have him sit at the front of the temple when uh, he was preaching. Okay, okay so good. yes, right. Okay, uh, and so though, the reason I brought that up is like when you were converting to Greek Orthodox, did anybody was like, ah, you're Puerto Rican, we don't really want you, or no? no but they people. were actually very welcoming. Uh, Nia's family was fantastic to me. They're so warm, welcome, welcoming me into uh, their family and into the religion. Religion, um, uh, but it was also a source of great comedy for right. them, uh, right. the fact that I was Puerto Rican and Jewish and, and coming into the family. But the, the, uh, the joke is that I actually look like all of her relatives. Oh I mean, yeah, I can yeah, see I, that. Yeah, so like yeah. we are, I, I've been confused uh, for being a brother of one of her cousins a bunch of times, so you know. If you said you were Greek, there's not a person in the world who would challenge you. Uh, absolutely not. Yeah, they'd be like, no. oh, of course, that's I'm right. probably Turk too. I'm yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You, you look like my cousin, actually. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. See, there you go. So, uh, so talk to me about how you got started in acting. That's what I'm always curious. Well, about. I was uh, in the restaurant business. That was my stepfather's business, and uh, in New oh, York course, City. Of course, because you're Greek. Yeah, he right. ran a diner. No, no, no. <laughs> my stepfather's Jewish, and he had ran a, a Mexican restaurant, of which course. makes perfect sense. Um, loco. And he, uh, I was supposed to go into that business. I hated it. But all the people who worked in the restaurant, as you know, uh, you know, actors, singers, and all that stuff. And I was bored, and one of the waiters said, you should take this acting class I'm going to. And I went, all right. So I started doing that. I liked it. And it became uh, a decision time whether to open up a restaurant with my stepfather or you know, be kicked out of the family. So I decided to be kicked out of the family. And I went to, I ran away to Chicago. Like, did you literally run away? Nah, I, I gave him fair warning. I said, right. in two months, I'm going to leave. Uh -huh. And my mom was OK, and you know, my stepfather was not so happy. Um, and, but they turned around. They're, they're very happy for me. Um, and then I started working at Second City in Chicago, taking classes and working at the theater and learning all that stuff. And uh, I didn't go to college, so that was kind of my, my college uh, years and learning and drinking and doing all that stuff and I having think a great time. that's what they do in college. Yeah, yeah. they're going to do a lot of drinking. A lot of free theater, did a lot of free stuff, uh, you know, got taken advantage of, not sexually, <laughs> but you know. Uh, was that connected to the church? <laughs> no, that was later. I got okay. uh, later um, when I got to Los Angeles. Um, I met my wife, and you know, and it was just, uh, there was nothing else I wanted to do. There was, I could do things, but like everything else seemed like work, and acting was, was fun and something I enjoyed, so I followed that. So when you first took the first class or whatever, did you think like, oh, that's it, this is it, I love it? Well, I was horrible. I couldn't get into the, the training center there. I, I got, uh, I failed the audition. So I had to go and uh, cry to my parents and they got me in, uh, basically what happened. Oh, really? uh, but, I, yeah, but I took classes other places and you know, I learned it from, from the bottom up kind of thing. Uh -huh. and, and so, you got to get a break at some point. So, like, what's the first TV show you do, or what's the, what's well, the first? Well, I, I think it was um, I got uh, besides the theater, I got a McDonald's commercial. Uh -huh. That was how I got my SAG card, and it was summer folks, summer food, summer fun. And um, I'm standing there with a, a, a hose on my head, you know, just Literally? like yeah, a hose on my head, and I'm, ah, it's the chubby bald guy, and he's wet with a hose on his head because he's so hot. And the, the water was ice cold. And they're like, okay, now spit out the water in my mouth. The, all the muscles in my mouth had frozen. So I couldn't talk and I couldn't do it. So, um, but I got my SAG card and the, uh, the thing aired and I made some money and that was fantastic. And then it's like, you know, work begets work. And then I started getting more commercials. And then every once in a while, a, uh, a show would come through Chicago. Like I did this uh, show called Missing Persons with Daniel J. Travanti from Hill Street Blues, and I played the morgue technician. So every time I went to the morgue, I you know I get a call and I I'd do that. So it was that, and then uh, I was in this big Bud Light commercial, and uh, that gave me enough money to move out here. Okay, with so, Mia. so I gotta ask you about that. What's what like? So I've always been curious, and people who are watching they don't know. Like, so how much do you get for a Bud Light commercial? Um, I was in the tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, over time, it used to be more. Usually, if you could get a national commercial, you can make you know thirty thousand bucks or something like just from that one commercial. Um, but the way it is now, it's harder to make that money. But like from that commercial, I got other jobs like print work for that uh, for that stuff. Uh, so they would pay me handsomely for that. So do you get residuals on that commercial, or you just get a one-time? Sometimes one -time? you get, yeah, sometimes you get residuals, sometimes you get like a, just a payout kind of thing. Uh, sometimes, every time it airs, you get money. Do you? Yeah. Um, well, so you did. I don't I haven't done the commercial in forever. But like if it airs on, during a network broadcast, you get more money. If it airs on, uh, you know, a uh, local thing, or uh, national, I mean, um, regional, it's less money. So, I mean, that's the thing about acting. So it's a really, really tough, right? Breaking through, you have a lot of years of struggle, et cetera. But this residual thing is like magic. This it, almost doesn't happen in any other job where like right. you do a job and then like 17 years later you get like a, ch oh, by the way, it ran again. Right. Here's $321. Well, I'm still getting, I'm, I still get checks uh, now for, you know, 17 cents or, you know, for some TV show I did that showing in Sweden now. Uh, or so, so, uh, you know, a commercial or something like that. I'll get you know, tiny.
tiny bits of, of money, and it costs more to process and send than the actual check is worth, <laughs> which is ridiculous. And there's, uh, there used to be a bar in uh, like North Hollywood uh, called Residuals. And it was, for a while, if you brought in a check for less than a dollar, you could get a free drink. But it's too, it's too many of them now, so they <laughs> close down. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of yeah, funny. Yeah. It's ironic. So uh, is there a moment where you thought, well, you know, God damn it, it looks like I made it. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I've been pretty lucky with, you know, staying afloat. And I haven't had another job besides acting for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. So I've always found something. Plus, my, you know, my wife makes some coins, so... Uh, when I'm unemployed, she supports me, which is wonderful. Um, but it, it was there was a time where like I'd be working, she wasn't, or we'd switch, you know. But now we're both kind of working at the same time, so that's good. So like that. So she, you know, obviously she's made a bunch of movies and stuff. But my big fat Greek wedding was a huge, enormous success. Yeah. So is there residuals on that? Do you still get like like the DVD stuff? Yeah, or? I mean, there's still you know, trickles in and, and stuff like that. It's not. I mean, it all adds up to a lot of. No, it adds up yeah. to you know, you know, decent size amount of money. Yeah. I don't, of course, know what it is because I'm just a stupid actor. Uh, but <laughs> I, know, I, I still, I, I can still, uh, you know, feed my family. So, uh, what percentage? Because I'm like, again, I always think like for people that don't. Know you want a, you want a number, don't you? <laughs> no, no, no. You no, want to no, know? You no. want to see some bank statements? Okay. I, I <laughs> Did didn't bring, bring those. Did you bring them? I okay. didn't. I don't no, know. no, no. For the people at home who who don't know how this works. So let's say they're thinking of going into acting, right? So what percentage of people you think make it enough that like that's their living? There's there's some weird number like one percent of the the members of uh, the Screen Actors Guild um, make more than a hundred thousand dollars a year or something like that. Or make so that's a little discouraging. It is. It's there's not a lot of time, but but now with you know there's so much content out there. Um, for TV, you know, uh, with all the cable channels and everything like that, that I'm sure it's, you know, people are making livings, um, but it's, it's, it's kind of hard to do. So you're the 1%. You go around telling people like, hey, I made it to the 1%. I have t-shirts that say, I'm the 1%, you know? bitch. Right. <laughs> you're 1% of the actors who made it. God, that's tough, man. That's interesting. It is. I mean, the upside is, is so alluring, right? Right. Uh, no, I, well, I mean, that's part of the problem where like, a lot of people get into this thing because they want to be famous. Right. They want to be, you know, a star. And um, that's, uh, you know, you're not going to be happy, really, unless you're, you become Tom Cruise or Tom Hanks or, or something like that. Uh, and who does, you know? I feel like with all your job, with any job, you got to like it. If you don't like it, you can't put the number of hours in. Absolutely. If you're doing it for another reason, like to get famous to whatever, right. it's not going to work, no. right? No. But if you genuinely enjoy it, and I remember I interviewed somebody now, of course, I've forgotten their name, but he was in The Wire, he was the, the lieutenant there, he was a great actor and stuff. He was an accountant, but he couldn't help himself. During lunch breaks, he'd go and do auditions, right? Wow. And like he broke through at 43 or 53 or something and was like, that, and finally was like, that's it. Yeah. I'm going into acting. And he's great. He's great, you know, and I feel terrible that I forgot his name, but... See but, the guy who was on uh, Spider-Man? Was he uh, Yeah, I think so. Uh, and that was in the, that commercial for the insurance thing? I think so. <laughs> I know, it's funny, but like, but he was terrific like in the wire. For the, he has initials for the, his first name? Yeah. Ah, whatever. I'll look it up. Well, okay. I'll look it up. Okay. <laughs> you can uh, cut this part out, right? It's not live. <laughs> no, okay, no, good. No, we're, Fantastic. We're not cutting anything right, out. Let's just what? keep it real. Okay, so now this is the other thing I get to act, ask actors. Okay. This is where we're, we're getting inappropriate. We haven't gotten inappropriate yet. Oh, okay. good. Yeah. Good. So, like, was there a moment where you had a little bit of shine to you, if you will, uh, from the acting? <laughs> you brought it up. Uh, and so, or you did a set or something or whatever it is, you know, back in Chicago, mm -hmm. where it got you women, where they, they were like, oh, man, I saw you, and hey, how you doing? And it's kind of how I got my wife. Um, I was understudying for Chris Farley. Um, he had broken his leg. And, oh, really? Uh, That's yeah, okay. and I, I, was, I filled in for him. And my wife had just come down from, from Canada. And after the show, she said, she came up to me and she goes, uh, hi, my name's Nia, and you know, you're really good on stage. And uh, she was much younger. And, um, yes. you know, and then she walked away and it was very flirtatious. And I knew, I turned to a man and said, I'm gonna marry that woman. Um, wow, really? Then, yeah. you're, like, it's funny, your life's out of a movie. It is. <laughs> but besides, I mean, besides that, you know, I mean, uh, 
there's kind of a thing known that you know, comedians and act comedians don't get the the women that other, you know, forms of acting get, um, uh, or musicians. Musicians always get a I, ton of women. I mean, you can play oboe and like chicks will line up, but. Yeah, I'm so bitter about the musicians. I'm so bitter. I mean, like, with these hands, I can't do anything. I can play bongos maybe, but that's about it. Yeah, what is it about musicians that girls would immediately take off their underwear and throw it at them? Like, literally, um, right? I know. I saw Tom Jones um, at, uh, I was at uh, John Stamos's, John, I'm dropping names now, John yeah. Stamos's birthday party, and Tom Jones was there, and he And performed. you threw your underwear. I was so close. <laughs> To, I mean, but I was wearing like a tuxedo and I had to like undo everything and then take off my grandpa panties and then, you know, then he would have <laughs> covered them and he wouldn't be able to see. What's new? So, so I'm getting a couple yeah. of things out of this. One, uh, Tom Jones is still alive. That's yes. good. Okay. And number two, John Stamos makes people wear tuxedos at his birthday party. It was kind of like a brat pack uh, thing for his uh, 50th birthday. Oh, but John um, Stamos is 50? He's 50. Wow, he looks yeah, great, man. He looks fantastic. Yeah. He, um, I used to watch him when he was Blackie on General Hospital. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, yes, but, I did. Me and my mom. Demi Moore. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah it was some I had a girlfriend who, uh, who loved it and I got into it. Yeah. Yeah. The whole my, Luke and Laura thing. Oh, it's him. Oh, I used to watch yeah. it with my mom. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so there was no Gomez groupies. There was no, like. No. No. Um, that's, but that's got a good ring to it. The Gomez groupies. Gomez groupies. groupies. I, yeah. yeah, I like that. Um, Every once in a while, there was some you know poor lost soul who uh, would you know, and hey, you're my favorite, or there's just something weird they, and bizarre, and <laughs> and I you know take her home and make her feel good. But besides <laughs> that, it was all it was slim pickings. Uh -huh. So when Nia came up to you, was she a citizen? Uh, like she? No, she wasn't a citizen. And the next question is no, she did not use me to get her green card. She got her green card on her own based on her uh, artistic merit. Uh -huh. So she got. Oh, really? A, yes. she's, she's she in that yes. category. She got that category. Because that's a literal thing. Yes, and she got her green card there, and then became a citizen. But so we got married after she got her green card. And and was she doing any acting, et cetera, on her own? At she that was. Point? Yeah, she was up at the uh, Second City in, in uh, London, Ontario, in Canada, and came down. To that's join a real place, cast. London, Ontario. London, Ontario. It's yes. not made up. It's outside of Toronto somewhere. Okay. Yeah, east of Toronto. So what'd you do? Like, so she flirted with you a little bit, and then she had you a were boyfriend. I would say we became friends, and I wore her down, and you know, tricked her into marrying me, basically. So did she have the boyfriend at the show? Because that would have been kind of bad. No, he was up in Canada. Oh, he that guy yeah, was screwed. He had no yeah, chance. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> I like that story. So now you're on Cougar Town. Um, yes. So uh, do you love it? Do you hate it? What's the? <laughs> oh, I hate it. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait for it to end. It's our fifth season. We started shooting yesterday, um, and we will be on the air in January or February. Um, and it's been it's been fantastic. It's it's a wonderful job. You know, great people. It's all cliche. Basically, I have to say this. Or I can get fired. Totally. Um, you know, I'm expendable. It's very, I'm like you know, I'm way down on the call sheet. Um, there's yeah, I'm a dime a dozen. It's just you know, it's amazing. I always think about, because the, the writers will write, and then my character's name is Andy, then Andy, you know, uh, falls into the lake in the golf cart. So easy to write, but then I have to go do that, or whatever right. it is. So they could just say, and Andy gets bludgeoned to death with a ball peen hammer, and then I'm done. It's one sentence is my career, gone. So I have to be careful of what I say and what I do. That's true, but look, you know, you're partly kidding around, but that's really true in a lot of cases. It really right? is. I mean, especially like in you know soap operas and stuff like that. And, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, they'll enjoy that. They'll oh, be like, yeah. oh, that's a nice plot twist. We get to murder this guy, yep. right? And so, like Chevy Chase, I remember he was talking smack about his show. What is that? The um, um, right um, community uh, something. Community, you're right. Community. Yeah, is that it? Something. Yeah. We'll look all these up. Okay, it is community, yeah, right? It's community. And then and then they asked him. I mean, like he's Chevy Chase. He, I'm sure he doesn't care, but. But yeah, I mean, you talk smack. That's that's gonna give you. That's, that puts you in trouble. Yeah, as you're not gonna make friends that way, right? And so, out of all the things that you did, is there one that you loved that you were like, okay, that that's the one I remember as being gold? I mean, there. Uh, at each stage, there was always something that you know was great. When I first got into Second City in the touring company, that was like the happiest day of my life. I was, I just couldn't believe it, and that was great. And then when I got my first national commercial. The, you know, more elation, and just because when I got uh, the Drew Carey show, 
and they called me back a bunch of times. That was great. And I love doing Felicity. That was uh, fantastic. Um, and you know, this, this show has been wonderful. I mean, to work with Courtney Cox is like, you know, we all watched her on Friends and she, to work with her and for her to know my name and go, <laughs> hi Ian, and like give me a hug and a kiss. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> It's I'm funny so, that you've so worked on like a hundred things. But that's still like I would feel the same yeah, way, you know. Absolutely, and it still feels good and all that. No, I know it's Courtney. I'm like, it's Courtney freaking Cox. She was in a uh, Bruce Springsteen video for crying out loud. Do you know how far up the church or temple that she would sit up? You know, oh my goodness, like she'd be like behind the rabbi or, yeah, or the exactly. priest. Yeah. Like <laughs> she'd be halfway up to God. Like, oh, well, she's <laughs> levitating. Oh, why am I not levitating? But I give a lot of money. You know, on that elation thing, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like the first couple of jobs I got, and I'm like, yes, yeah. yes, right. So when you got the Second City touring thing, it's like like when you have sex with a hot girl you've been wanting to have sex with your whole life, and I your friends no knew it. Like. Okay, okay. <laughs> and then you almost want to call them while you're still in bed, your friends. <laughs> like, I'm in bed with Allison. Okay, okay. So There's, did you yeah, feel that's that way? Fantastic. Like, but there's also then, then there's some times where it's like, it's all about uh, getting the job. Mm -hmm. Like I get some commercials, I'm like, yeah, I got this commercial. And it's like, nah, now I gotta do it. Now I gotta do the job. The whole, the joy was getting the work and now you gotta actually sit there and do it. And, like, and drive into the pond with the golf cart and right, or, have you the know, hose, the freezing cold Right, or deal with the clients. And after a certain amount of time, it was like commercials, is like, oh, I don't wanna, you know, <laughs> all these khaki wearing um, people from the from the company who are in their casual outfits for the shoot and they're like oh this is what a director's chair is like oh this is oh this is not as comfortable as it looks and it's like and then they're giving their their penny ante notes and it's just you know it's a kind of a drag and but it's it's a job it's a job like any other job that you gotta suck up and do from time to time oh yeah of course so last thing is there any thing that you'd like to like, man, if this happened, that would rock, you know? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I always want to play like a bad guy, uh, preferably with a gun. Um, I like shooting guns. Uh, I like being a bad guy. That's good. It's like, like, you know, it's like, man, get this face, you know, I'm not, you know, no one's gonna You're hire too to likable, that's the problem. I'm too sweet and lovable and such right. a nice guy. Um, so You do, you have that face. You have that face of like, Oh, I like that guy. I like that guy. But you could be a mob guy, though. You could turn it around. Like you, you sure. know, you look Greek. You know, we could turn that yeah. into Italian. Right. Yeah, you know. Exactly. <laughs> so, just a step to the left. Like, like a likable yeah. yeah. hitman. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> I don't want to kill you, but I gotta take your thumbs. Right. Kind of thing. Yeah. I can that's do that. funny because, like, I'm not an actor. I, it's because I, I can't remember the lines, and I. I that's not my thing. This it's is a my muscle. Thing. It's like any other muscle you could learn. Right. You could do it. So, but but I've always wanted to either kill someone or get shot in a movie. Like, yes. Like and that's pretty cool. Like maybe yes. if I'm not cool enough to kill someone, I could at least be cool enough to get shot. I've been, I've been uh, killed a bunch of times. Oh, you which, have. Yeah, Congratulations. Yeah. This is and beaten up, which is fun. Um, excuse me, while I burp. I, I worked on a movie this summer where I got uh, I got beaten up a lot. Um, it's just because I wouldn't die and this just seemed to take forever <laughs> for, for them to kill me. <clears throat> but I'm working with this actor, a very good actor, um, but he was hitting me. Like, like literally? Literally hitting me. And there was like a, 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 a fake, long, one of those long wrenches that you find in steam rooms. Right. You know, you're going, eh, eh, one of those things, and yeah. it was rubber. Yeah. But it's still, it's hard rubber. It's not like floppy rubber. Right. It's like it has to hold it. Because it can't flop, shit, otherwise right. exactly. it won't be realistic. And he, like I'm down on the ground, and he's hitting me with it, thinking it doesn't hurt, but he's hitting me in the shoulders, and he hit me in the head, and like I, you know. And the acting was easy, though. Because I'm just like, ow, ow, you know, just, and <laughs> then I just died, and I'm like, please have this end, because it really hurts. Um, and then like, he would throw me up against walls, and I'm like, I come home bruised and beaten up, and you know, that's, uh, it, it's still fun though. I like doing stunts, so it's fun. Okay, I, no, I'm gonna go with getting shot then. Okay, if they shot. bring in the plastic wrench or whatever, I'm like, no, no, <laughs> Ian warned me about this, I'm right. not going for this. Don't, don't get shot and then have to fall off a horse, because that's gotta hurt. 
Oh yeah, no, I'm not gonna mm. that And then well, that's gonna. There's like a Turkish movie where the guy's like, oh, like after he gets shot for like two and a half, and he's like, oh, that that's me. That's what I want. That's the role I want. All right, Ian Gomez, you've been great, man. Thank oh, you. Everybody, check out Cougar Town. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you. on the Young Thank Turks. Thank you. Oh, of course. Appreciate it. Anytime.